Modeling a dice might seem simple, but it's not that straightforward. Throwing a subsurf modifier over a cube and slapping a texture onto it is for amateurs. If you want to learn how to create a quality model, then stay tuned. So I'm going to start off with a cube. I'm going to tab into edit mode and select all the faces. I'm then going to go ahead and insert it. Now you're not going to see anything happen and we need to expand the box that we have here and check individual. And then you're going to see the individual faces basically inset. Now I want to set the value to 0.1 and I'm going to repeat that. So we're insetting twice. Once I've done that, I'm just going to tab back out and I'm going to add a subdivision surface modifier to this. So let's go ahead and do that and shade smooth as well. Now doing this is going to give us the basic shape of a round face dice. Now that we've got the basic shape down, let's head on over to the modifier tab and ensure that we have our level set to three. Now we're going to go ahead and apply this. So once we do so, we're going to tab back into edit mode. Now, you might have the urge to use booleans to create the pips, but you need to refrain from doing so. We're going to model the individual pips with proper topology. So let's go ahead and switch to our front orthographic view and zoom in. Now, I'm going to select the faces right here. So you can see the T vertices that we have here. Right after that, we're going to select the first four faces. So let's just switch to our face mode and select that. Now I'm going to go ahead and select all the corners that we have here. So this is going to be the face with four pips. So once I've gone ahead and done that, I'm just going to go over to loop tools and select circle. So it's going to circularize the vertices that we have there. So once I've done that, I'll then move on over to the top face. I'll select this and I will say circle and I'll go ahead and Switch to the left side, select these four corners. Again, it's right after the T vertice that we have here. And I'm also going to select the middle set of faces right here and say circle. That's going to be the face with five pips. Then let's go on over to the back side. Now with the back view selected, I'm going to select the faces right here, the set in the middle and the one in this corner, and I'm going to repeat it by hitting circle. Now let's move on to the right hand side and select these two corners right here, then repeat the function. All right, so now we have to move on to the bottom and let's select this, this, this one right here and these two sets right in the middle. And let's go ahead and circularize it. All right, so now that we've done so, we need to ensure that these edges are actually lined up properly. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm just going to dissolve the edges right here. Make sure and just select the edges that we want. And do a limited dissolve. Once I've done that, I'm just going to go ahead and connect these. Now I'm not going to bore you by showing you how I'm connecting all these edges. I'm just going to kick this into hyperlapse. So I'm going to basically do the same thing to all the edges that need to be aligned. All right, so now that we've gone ahead and aligned all our edges, we need to ensure that all the pips are of equal size. And in order to do so, we need to come up here and select face area. This way we'll be able to measure 
the set of faces and ensure that they are equal in size. So I'll just check the face area of the faces that we have here. And I'm going to now scale the faces that we have in the middle to match the ones on the corner. So let's go ahead and do so. So holding down shift is going to give you more granular control over the values. So let's go ahead and do that with the face on the top. Like so. So now that we've gone ahead and made sure that all the pips are of equal size, we can go ahead and turn off the face areas. And now on the side which has six pips, we need to make sure that these are actually aligned. So let's go ahead and turn vertex snap on, then align it like so. Select the faces, just align it to the verts in the middle. So now that we've got this down, we need to rotate the face with six pips at a 45 degree angle. So let's go ahead and do that now. So let's go ahead and select the faces in the middle and grow our selection. I'm going to grow it a couple of times and separate our selection. After doing so, I'm going to rotate this on the Z axis. So selecting the new object that we just separated. I'm going to rotate on the Z axis by 45 degrees. And once I've gone ahead and done that, I'm going to select both the objects and combine them. So now that we've gone ahead and done this, we can go ahead and merge our vertices. So I'm just going to come over here to this icon right here and go to options and select auto merge. So select this and start to stitch them together. Now, once again, I'm going to kick this into hyperlapse because it's going to be really boring to watch me stitch edges together. All right, so now that our vertices are merged, I'm just gonna select the faces that are gonna make the pips, like so, and basically select all the sides. And just make sure that I've selected everything. And once I've done that, I'm going to go ahead and outset this time. So go ahead and uncheck individual, select outset and change the value to 0 0.01. Now make sure that we don't have any intersecting faces. Well, once we've gone ahead and done that, let's select the words in the middle. And we're going to push this towards the middle. So let's go ahead and hit G on the keyboard. And push this back by a value of 0.1 in the negative direction. And accept that. Now I'll we'll go ahead and select these right here. Push this back on the Y axis by 0.1 again and basically do the same thing for all the pips.
All right, so now that we've gone ahead and done this, we can go ahead and add a new subdivision surface modifier over this. And let's just switch this to a nice shiny matte cap so that you can see the final result. So everything looks a-okay. And this is basically how you go about modeling a round face dice with proper topology. If you'd like to get your hands on the project files for this tutorial, you can do so at the link provided in the description. Next, we'll take a look at how to model a dice with beveled corners.